who were shudras how did they become untouchables the purusha sukta of the rigved propounded the doctrine of chatur varnya it says the four castes emerge from the body of the creator the brahmin the priest was equated to the mouth kshatriya the warrior to the arms vaishya the trader to the thighs and the shudra sprang from the feet manu the law giver degraded the shudras to the lowest level once born and untouchable he remains an untouchable forever obliged to carry dead animals and eat carrion not allowed to use public streets untouchables lived in a state of permanent segregation During the Peshwa regime untouchables were forced to string a broom around their waists to sweep away their own footsteps they were made to wear an earthen pot around their necks lest their spit pollute the earth it was a bondage worse than the slavery of the roman empire more cruel than what was perpetrated against american negroes and german jews how long will this go on <coughs> 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 Why did you enter the temple? Uh, I was taking shelter. Last night it rained very heavily. Uh, you have defiled our temple. Uh, you are shut of hell on the idol. Uh, 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 you fill this cup. You dirty untouchables. Think you are a burger. Now what is everybody is a burger? Hit him. Teach him a lesson. You comment son in laws. Teach him a lesson he won't forget. गौतम मोहन का बदला दलित जनता जिंदाबाद दलित जनता जिंदाबाद गौतम मोहन का बदला गौतम मोहन का बदला गौतम मोहन का बदला
Young man, you are the only one who's always here before me and always the last one to leave. Your name? Bhim Rao Ambedkar. Ah, at last we meet. Professor Seligman talks a lot about you. I am Lajpat Rai. Can we go outside and talk? Our freedom struggle in India. Oh, I'm sorry. Allow me to introduce myself. You need no introduction, sir. Professor Seligman speaks very highly of the economics thesis you are writing for him. We need men like you in the struggle. Ambedkar, these are very exciting times. The war has completely finished Britain. We must take advantage of that. As you may know, Tilak has begun his home rule league in India. And I am continuing my struggle from here. They have deported me, but they can never defeat me. We are having a meeting next week. I'm sorry I cannot attend. I'm here on a scholarship from Baroda State. I owe it to the Maharaja to concentrate on my studies. Pleased to have met you, sir. You've often heard me say that the purpose of knowledge is not just to understand the world, but to change it. Yes? Take my example. I teach, I write books, and I'm also one of the founders of the Negro Urban League. I know, sir. Please understand me, I have no complaints about your academic work. You're probably one of the best students I ever had. Please come. I'm disappointed, Ambedkar. I'm disappointed that you choose not to involve yourself in your country's political struggle for freedom. I'm in America to study, not to join Mr. Lajpatrai's Home Rule League if that is what you are referring to. I know what my responsibilities are. Of course you do. And none of my business, really, I'm sorry. Well, what's the subject of your anthropology thesis? Castes in India, their mechanism, genesis and development. Ah, when do you present your paper? Next Tuesday. Well, good luck to you. Thank you, sir. Couldn't sleep last night thinking about what you told me. I just don't get it. It's so unreal. They literally won't touch you. That's the least of it. At least you have the freedom. You got no freedom. What are you talking about? Hey! Quit your jabbering. We got a restaurant to open in two hours. Get to work. Quick, quick! At least you have the 14th Amendment. Fat lot of good has done us. Think about it. You're from India and you can go to Columbia University. I'm an American. I can't be a student there. I can be smart, talented. But hey, let's, let's just keep that 14th Amendment stuff in the Constitution. Because in the real world, black is black and white is white. And never the twain shall meet. You read Rudyard Kipling? Think you're the only one who reads books? <laughs> <laughs> be you black? Ah, bitch! Why, what the I'll hell? teach you! Oh, you keep your hands to yourself! Ah, ah, take that! I didn't do anything! Dirty nigger! Keep your hands ah, to yourself! Please! I'll ah. get you touching a white woman! I'll kill you! I didn't get touch me. Girl, you hear me? You dirty nigger! Stop. You take that! Ah, I'll teach you a lesson! I'll ah. kill you! You hear me? Ah, you please, black son of a bitch! God's sake. Now get the hell out of here! Dirty nigger! Manu says, the only occupation the Lord prescribed to the low castes is to meekly serve the other three castes. No collection of wealth must be made by the low castes, even though they are able to do so. For a low caste man who has acquired wealth gives pain to the other castes. Chamu, give it to her and take the money. The low caste must never speak to the high caste, save from far away, and when they pass must utter loud cries, and whosoever hears them must leave the road till they have passed. Who wants your rated money? Go, go, go away, go! This boy thinks that just because his father was Subhedar Major, you will cut his hair. Army or no army, hey. Mahar is a Mahar. But you are cutting a buffalo's hair. So? You are worse than buffaloes, donkeys and dogs. <laughs> the high caste must never read the Veda in the presence of low caste. If the low caste hear the Veda, their ears should be filled with molten lead. 
if they utter the veda their tongues should be cut off viva viva the teacher said no brahmin worth his salt will defile the language of vedas didn't i tell you to go straight to the principal i did you said things will be different in bombay <laughs> Stop crying. Stop crying. I say stop crying. Goats are used as sacrificial offerings, not lions. Stop crying. You are the son and grandson of Subedar Major. Mind well. Before I start reading my paper, I should thank Professor Golden Weiser. Thank you, sir. Caste in India. The average Hindu, and I may add the average American, is always in ecstasy whenever he speaks about the Indian village. Since many believe this idealistic view, it would be better to present a more realistic picture of village society. The Indian village is not a single social unit. The two major divisions are between the touchables and the untouchables. The touchables occupy the position of a ruling race while the untouchables occupy the position of a subject race of slaves. These positions are fixed at birth. There is no escape. Can caste be said to exist amongst non-Hindus? Yes. The Hindus have spread their poison to the rest. Caste has penetrated the fabric of indian society what caste are you mar now if you can get back the paper at hand to ambedkar's grand success grand success double ma oh phd oh all in 3 wow. years while we donkeys are still struggling with the ba <laughs> shit hey, professor seligmans here sir ah i'm bedkar i have a letter for professor sidney webb very kind of you where's your class i don't drink sir oh such a nice boy i want to hear from you after you finish your thesis I'm writing the preface, don't you forget. Don't ask any of those London chaps. Lajpat Rai might not understand you, but I think I do. Your struggle has been much, much harder than his. Well, <clears throat> goodbye. Good luck. Brothers and sisters, we are honored to have with us today a friend of brother Steve Brown, a young man from India. His people, Steve tells me, have been struggling under a terrible yoke. They have been enslaved like us for countless generations. They have been oppressed, humiliated, and treated like animals. The oppressors don't touch them and call them untouchables. They are condemned to live impure and die impure, a permanent hereditary stain which nothing can cleanse. Let us pray for them. Lord, hold our brothers and sisters in india in the palm of your hand protect them and help them lord as you hold and protect us be with this young man lord as he leaves to pursue his studies in london
Why did you leave America? Because I have finished my studies there. I intend to continue them here. What do you plan to do in London? Enroll at the Leonard School of Economics. Oh. Keep terms at Creason. Complete my thesis. Consult the archives. And also, qualify as a barrister. Oh, is that all? He has got a brain and a half, hasn't he? Were you a member of the Gadar party in America? No, sir. I was not. And you took no part in any of their activities? No, sir. I did not. What about a home rule league? Were you a member of that? I was in America to study. What's this then? That's my economics thesis. Page 37. The British government in India has been the costliest government in the world and the poverty of the Indian people has no parallel in any part of the world. Search him. You spies, get down from my guard! Ah! You never told me you are Mahars! You liars! You can't travel in my car! You were so well dressed that I thought you... We will pay. Double the fare. Double? Triple? Who cares? Give me myself, pollute myself for money! We are thirsty. We want some water. Welcome to London. Professor Seligman recommends you highly. What was your thesis for him about? It's a financial history of India from 1765 to the present. Very ambitious. Has it been done before? No, sir. I'm the first. And what thesis do you plan to write for us? On the problem of the rupee. Oh. I wasn't aware there was a problem. I disagree with Keynes' justification for India's gold exchange standard. Then you disagree with me too? Yes, Professor Cannon. Unless you have changed your opinion. <laughs> I must certainly have not. I don't mean to be rude, sir. I... And you think you can prove that both Keynes and I have been wrong all these years? Yes, sir. I think I can. Well, well, well. I certainly wish you good luck. Thank you, sir. I shall look forward to reading your critique. Ah, first man in. You know, you don't have to be so anxious. Relax. Sleep late one day. There are plenty of books. They won't run away, you know. There's plenty for everybody. I'm sorry, you won't understand. Good evening, Mr. Andrews. A letter for you. Thank you. What about this week's bill? Tomorrow. Our son died yesterday. I'm sorry to give you this news. He fell ill. There was no money to treat him. Do not disturb your studies on account of us. Take care of your health. Everyone remembers you here. Dear Ramu, it is sad that Gangadhar had to die. Life is going to be rather painful without him. And for you, all the more as his mother. Because of the little money I sent, you are compelled to wash the dirty utensils in others' houses. I hate myself for doing this to you. And here in London, with the war, life is hard for me too. At times, I have had to sell my books for survival. But one can't complain, Bhimra. Studying at the London School of Economics and doing law here at Gray's Inn must be difficult, Ambedkar. I'm trying. My friends here don't believe me, so perhaps you could enlighten them. 
Isn't it true that Indians eat with their left hand because they wipe their posteriors with their right? <laughs> well, is it true that the English bathe just once a week? Of course, this is just a rumor. I'm sure it can possibly be true. My dear fellow, may I remind you that you are a guest in this country? I thank you for your kind hospitality. Barora State regrets to inform you that the period of your scholarship is over and you are required to return to India immediately. As per the bond, you had worked for the Baroda State for 10 years. Divan, the Baroda State, India. Is there no way you could persuade them to allow you a few more months after it's so close to finishing? No, sir. Well, Ambedkar, all is not lost. I can grant you an extension for four years. If you return within that time, you can resume where you left off. I appreciate that, sir. Thank you. You think you'll be able to return? I don't know. I hope so. Biva, you made us so worried. Why? My ship was only a few hours late. We heard a bomb hit your ship. A bomb? But thank God, it was not your ship. We went to the ship's office. They told us your telegram was wrong. Only your luggage was on that ship. A bomb hit the ship with my luggage? Yes, we thought your ship had sunk. My books, my books were on that ship. Forget about your books. What are you talking? At least you are alive. To India, Montague declares Association of Indians in the administration. Hey, Ananda, you have some money? Home rule comes yes. to India. <laughs> hey, you. <laughs> Anna, are you still wrestling? Oh, yes. <laughs> Namaste. Namaste. Rama, Biva has come. Hmm? When the jewel himself is here, what's need for jewelry? <laughs> right? Come. I tried everything to save our son. But there was no money. I was so alone. I needed you so much. <laughs> Every, every morsel of food I ate, I thought of you. Every Saturday I fasted for your safety. I know your hardships and loneliness. You know, sometimes I feel, I feel so guilty. कबीरा कहे ये जग अंधा 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 अंधी जैसी गाय 
बछड़ा था सो मर गया अंधी जैसी गाय बछड़ा था सो मर गया झूठी चाम चटाए कबीर कहे ये जग अंधा कबीर कहे जग अंधा गगन घटा कहरानी साधो गगन घटा कहरानी साधो गगन घटा कहरानी पूर्व दिशा से उठी है बदरिया ओ पूर्व दिशा से उठी है बदरिया रिम झिम बरसत पानी रिम झिम बरसत पानी पूर्व दिशा से उठी है बदरिया रिम झिम बरसत पानी ओ रिम झिम बरसत पानी अंधी जैसी गाय बछड़ा था सो मर गया झूठी जाम चटा कबीर कहे ये जग अंधा कबीर कहे ये जग अंधा कबीर कहे ये जग अंधा पर्दा छोड़ दे हो पर्दा पर्दा छोड़ दे बिन पर्दे के बाद पर्दा पर्दा छोड़ दे बिन पर्दे के बाद दुल्हन से दुल्ला मिला तो दुल्हन से दुल्ला मिला तो ठीकी staring at me like that ramu i have to go back i had to leave my studies halfway what are you going to do with so much of knowledge enough now i won't let you go don't worry i'm not going immediately but you know i have to go to baroda to work i can also come with you mm. let me go first and find a place to live then i'll come and take you with you I want a room. Hmm. Your name, please. Himra Ambedkar. Hindu, eh? Ah. Huh? Caste Mahar. Sorry, I don't have a room. At least for a week. You want to close my hotel? Try somewhere else. Roshan yes passenger Are you alone Yes Is this your only luggage Yes Come Oh kuda Hmm Do 
Roshan, Roshan, Roshan. He is not Parsi. He is not wearing Sudre Kusti. Who are you? You are not a Parsi. Yes, I am. Trying to fool us? All right, all right. Show me your Sudre Kusti. Come on, show us, show us. I am Hindu. Hmm. You can't stay here. This Dharamsala is maintained by the community for the use of Parsis only. I see your difficulty. I can assume a Parsi name for the register. You will also gain something if I stay here. I live as soon as I am sanctioned a house. I am an officer in the accounts department of Baroda State. Oh. All right. All right. You will have to pay five annas for the day. For boarding and lodging. And you will have to register under a Parsi name. Thank you. I'll get some food for him. But you can't stay in this room. I'll give you some other room. Pack up and come. Come with me. Come. This is where you'll have to stay. All right? Ane, give me the staff salary file. Will you fetch me a glass of water? Didn't you hear what I said? There is no water. What is that then? There is no water. Look here. You might be a senior officer. But you can't touch this water. Maybe the Maharaja should hear about this. Yes, yes. Go and tell him. We are not scared. This is our religion. If the Maharaja wants you to drink water, let him bring it from his own palace. He is a Maharaja. He can do whatever he likes. He can employ dirty, untouchables like you. Yes, I remember. <laughs> but you know what happened? But I didn't get 3% marks in economics like you, Mr. Mukherjee. <laughs> that you selling man said he was granting Mukherjee 3%. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> because he didn't want to discourage me. Actually, I deserve zero. <laughs> uh, Dr. Ambedkar, I am Jangi Umrigar. Hello. Secretary of this officer's club. Uh. May I have a word with you? Of course. Excuse me. Oh, yes. Please come, sir. It's like a... Uh, we have received your application letter. We will be pleased to admit you to this club. Uh, but only on the following conditions. Huh? You will have to sit at your own separate table. You can use your own cutlery, serviettes and crockery. And only one of our waiters, Makbul Ahmed, is willing to serve you. Hmm? Dear Ramu, it's very difficult to get a place to stay. Even Joshi and Mukherjee, my friends from Colombia, refused to help me. I remember how angry my father was when I decided to come to Baroda. You owe nothing to the Maharaja. Don't be dependent on the whims and fancies of a Maharaja. That too in Gujarat. Do you know how orthodox they are in Gujarat? But I have already accepted a job, Father. What? I remember I received a telegram about my father being critically ill. I missed my train, but somehow reached Bombay. Father, 
Hả? You son of a swine, you fraud, you liar. How dare you take a Parsi name? We know who you are. You are a Hindu and that too an untouchable. What do you mean by staying here? When do you intend to vacate? Please let me stay for just one more week. By that time, I would have found another. Nothing doing. You get out at once. You better pack off and get out by evening or else... If we find you here tonight, we are going to break your head. Understand? Dr. Ambedkar, Maharaja is expecting you. Please come. Ambedkar, come in, come in. I have been very proud of you, my boy. Very proud of you. I did cast in India. Excellent paper, excellent. Thank you, Your Highness. Say, so, what can I do for you? The Divan indicated that you had a problem. Sir, I need a place to stay. Ambedkar, I understand your problem, but you must understand mine. I have to go slow. As it is, I have caused a revolution by employing you here. You cannot expect to blow up the entire mountain of caste in a day or two. These things take time. You must be patient. All this drama. This is the first day that you are going to sit in uh, Sit Nam College. Uh, sit in uh, Sit Nam College. Sit in Scam College. <laughs> Listen, what's a boring untouchable going to teach us? Wait, till my father hears about this. <laughs> Think what this buffoon is going to speak in English. <laughs> I'm Professor Ambedkar. I'll be your lecturer in political economy. In case you are wondering what could I possibly teach you, allow me to introduce myself. I have an MA and PhD in public finance from the Columbia University in New York. My thesis covered the financial history of India from 1765 to the present. In addition, I am working towards an MSc from the London School of Economics. If any of you feel that I am not qualified to teach you and would like to leave, feel happy to do so now. 
So, let's begin. Dr. Ambedkar. Yes. I am Professor Trivedi. This water is reserved for the professorial staff. What do you think I am? Yes, yes, yes. We all know you are a lecturer, but uh, here we are to tell you to bring your drinking water from home. If you learn it, professors have any objection in my drinking this water, I suggest you to bring water from your home. Or purify it. You are Trivedi, so I assume that you know the rituals to purify polluted water. No? I'll tell you. Amedi Shava Chandala, Maddi Mansadi Dushita. That's from Vridha Haridas Smriti. Shall I repeat it? Amedi Shava Chandala, Maddi Mansadi Dushita. Hindu is as much the birthright of a Mahar as that of a Brahmin. And unless and until this attitude is adopted, the day on which India will have home rule is distant. A Swaraj, where there are no fundamental rights guaranteed for the depressed classes, will not be a Swaraj for us. It will be a new slavery. A Mahar. Oh, what a powerful statement, huh? Mm. Divan Sahib, do you know who is the writer of this anonymous letter? No, Your Highness. Dr. Ambedkar. Datto Bapawar told me. Dr. Ambedkar is starting a fortnightly. And he needs some help. Uh, yes, yes, Your Highness. I agree that with uncompromising courage you are trying to eradicate the evil practices created by this caste system mm -hmm. and to help liberate the lower classes from the unjust dominance of Brahmins and the priesthood. But still, let us not hurry in this case. No, Divan Sahib, no. We must encourage Dr. Ambedkar in every possible way. Yes, we will help him to start his fortnightly. Mook Nayak. Leader of the dumb. Shivacharka, take this down. India is a home of inequality. Hindu society is just like a tower which has several stories without a ladder or an entrance. One is to die in the story in which one is born. So friends, this Mangao conference has convinced me that you have found your savior in Ambedkar. I am confident that he will break your shackles. Not only that, a time will come when so whispers my conscience, Ambedkar will shine as a front rank leader of all India fame. Grandma, somebody is calling. Who can it be? Oh, Ambedkar! I think he's Shahu Maharaj. <laughs> Let's go up. Ah. Ah. Maharaj, please sit. Ambedkar. Ah. 
How about a cup of your special tea, Sister Ramabai? Lamuk tea. What they say is true. Behind every great man, there is a great woman. You are a lucky man, Ambedkar. Ah. Hmm. Ah. I have a contribution for your London studies. Open it. Thank you, sir. Ah, wonderful. So, come on. Let's go to Muknaik office. only a question of two years. What did you think of the defense? Well, well. Look what the cat dragged in. Oh, and Bedka. We're all out of chicken. We just served the last piece. Cabbage and gravy is all is left. What's the matter? Robert. Ah, I see you have my piece of chicken. Well, aren't you lucky? My father says in India, Indians and dogs eat outside. Apologize. Oh, all right. I apologize. News. Wonderful. Didn't you hear? Prince of Wales' visit to Bombay? No. What about it? Down shutters everywhere. Black flags. Gandhiji made a huge bonfire of British cloth. Hmm. There are other things Gandhiji should be burning. Like what? Asnudkar. There are 50 million untouchables in India with no civic, legal, political or moral rights. But you see, the British have to leave first. Everything else will follow. Yesterday, you boys had your lights burning till 9.30. I can't afford to have you lit up all night like Piccadilly Circus. You've got 10 minutes till 9 o'clock and then lights out. Dear Shiva Tarkar, how is Smoke and Ike? Life here is very difficult. My landlady is a very harsh and terrible woman. I have to make do with the frugal breakfast, which is also my lunch. In the 
quiet nights here in London. I can hear Balaram Bhav's clarinet. I am anxious about Ramabai. Please continue to take care of her. As I know, you will. Also, I hear from home that the tuition teacher is irregular. Why is this so? If money is the only constraint, please increase his salary or get another teacher. On no account should the education of the children suffer. Please personally look into the matter. Bhim Rao. <laughs> Never had a moment's time for you here in Bombay. And just look how he cares for you from a thousand miles. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, you can eat here. Excuse me, we met the other day. We did? You know, you dropped a paper and I picked it up. Ah, yes. Fanny Fitzgerald. We were all in bed. Pleasure to meet you. You work harder than anyone I've ever seen. I have very little time and much to do. I wonder if I could be of any help to you. I work in the House of Commons. And, well, I have access to a lot of references. Why don't we have a cup of coffee? And you can tell me exactly what you're working on. Hmm? It'll just take ten minutes and then you can get back to work. What's the matter? It's not that. I have no money. <laughs> My treat! Oh, come on. It won't bankrupt me, I promise. Good evening, Ambedkar. Good evening. I read your Mook Nayak. Dumb hero. I like your writing, but I don't like your ideas. That doesn't surprise me. <sighs> By the way, you know, Shah Maharaj is dead. I met a friend of mine today. He has just come from Bombay. For as an Adam, all men die. Even in Christ shall all be made alive. When my husband died, I wanted to die with him. I have been very selfish. I have never ever asked you about yourself. There's not much to tell really. He died in the war. Any children? I live with my mother. She's the only one I have left. I hope God gives you the happiness you deserve, Fanny. Bimrao Ramji Ambedkar. I hereby call you to the bar and do publish you barrister. A toast to the new lawyer. May he fight the good fight with courage and lots of success. May God bless my friends and keep them away from all harm. Beam, I have a gift for you. It's a Bible. A Bible? I'm going to write a book on the Bible and I'll dedicate it to you. 
Why, thank you. I'm Bedka. I expect you thought I called you in to congratulate you on your thesis. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but you're going to have to rewrite it. We have no quarrel with your conclusions, you understand. I personally think that they're wrong, as do the examiners. However, we would never ask anybody to alter their thinking just to suit ours. So you may keep the same conclusions, Ambedkar. But what does need to change is the tone of the piece, your language. This is an economics thesis, not an exercise in empire bashing. Ben, what's the matter? Didn't they love it? They hated it. I have to realize it. I don't believe that. Why? My language offended them. I just call a spade a speed. I didn't invent imperialism, they did. Oh, Ben, what are you going to do now? Rewrite. Paper! 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 It's a surprise. <laughs> like me in from Lakshmi Vahini. No, wait. Let me meet you first. <laughs> How are you? Hmm? <laughs> Sahib! Here's a pen and a compass box for you. Tomorrow we'll go to market and buy clothes for you. For your mother and Lakshmi Vani. This is my law degree. You know what they said? Bhimrao Ramji Ambedkar. I hereby call you to the bar and do publish you barrister. <laughs> Why don't you wake yourselves up? My heart breaks to see the pitiable sight of your sad faces and hear your sad voices. You have been groaning from time immemorial and yet you are not ashamed to hug your helplessness as an inevitability. Why did you not perish in the prenatal stage instead? Wake up. Wake up! Why do you worsen and sadden the picture of the sorrows, poverty, slavery and burdens of the world with your deplorable, despicable and detestable, miserable life? You had better die and relieve this world if you cannot rise to a new life or you cannot rejuvenate to yourselves. Wake up. As a matter of fact, it is your birthright to get food, shelter and clothing in this land in equal proportion with every individual, high or low. If you believe in living a respectable life, you believe in self-help, which is the best help. From the presidential chair of the Indian National Congress, Maulana Muhammad Ali referred to a suggestion to divide the untouchables equally between Hindus and Muslims. How dare he speak like that? Are we to tolerate this? Are we to be traded like slaves? How can we trust the Congress after this? Gandhi, the great social reformer, was in prison when this was said. And he remained silent. Do we need such saviors who care more about appeasing the conservative Muslims in their demand for Khilafat? I say no. 
I propose we establish a central institution for removing our difficulties and for placing our grievances before the government. I propose we call our organization the Bahishkrit Hirtakarni Sabha. Sahib? 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 What do you want? Can I have some peace in this house? You've locked yourself since morning. You... you didn't eat anything. I'm not going to die if I don't eat. You go and eat. Please leave me alone for a while. Damo, Damo, what happened? Damo, what happened? Dear Dathuba, our son Rajaratan has brought joy to my hectic life. When I see him, I remember my father's fondness and love for me. I am happy to see him around. I am trying my best to establish myself as a good lawyer. Yet being low caste makes things all the more difficult. But then, Radharat needs our comfort. Bhimra! Bhimra! Rajaratan is very serious. Please hurry up. Bhimrao Ramji Ambedkar having been nominated having been nominated a member of the Bombay Legislative Council a member of the Bombay Legislative Council do solemnly affirm do solemnly affirm that I'll bear true faith and allegiance that I'll bear true faith and allegiance to His Majesty the King Emperor to His Majesty the King Emperor as by law established as by law established that I will uphold the sovereignty that I'll uphold the sovereignty and integrity of British India and integrity of British India we should start our agitation from somewhere in Konkan. That who comes under the Bole resolution in the Bombay Legislative Council about the untouchables being allowed to use all public watering places. Let's begin the agitation of Mahat to the opening of the Saudar Tang for the untouchables. This will be the commencement of the social revolt. Sahasrabudhe, Chitre, and Tipnis should reach each and every village and get people to gather in thousands. They have hired a Tamasha theater for the conference and hundreds of people are marching towards Mahar.
brothers and sisters i am very thankful to you for giving me the honor of the presidency of this conference i am very happy to be here i learned my first alphabet at the dapoli school one always remembers with fondness the place where one has passed one's childhood but i am very sad too for for we go on bearing injustice my advice to you is let us throw away the dirty lifestyle imposed upon us by high caste hindus who condemned us to live in this hell so educate agitate and organize have faith in yourself and learn to be clean i therefore ask you to take a solemn vow to renounce eating carrion and thrown out crumbs educate your children inculcate in them the idea that they are destined to be great for us is not a battle for wealth and power it's a battle for freedom and self respect and with justice on our side i do not see how we can lose the battle the untouchables of mahad find it very difficult to obtain drinking water to remove this difficulty the mahad municipality in accordance with the bole resolution has opened the sauda tank for the public use irrespective of caste but you all know so far the untouchables of mahad have not implemented this resolution because they have been afraid so i appeal to this conference to give a lead in this matter so let us all go out to the sauda tank and drink water as is our legal right chalot sauda tank beating your people excuse confusion doctor sir please stop them <laughs> Hey, stop that. 
disgusting, inhuman. How could they be so brutal? Dr. Ambedkar! Yes? Will you please control your people? Control my people? Yes. Chitre? Gaikwad? He is asking me to control our people. All right, I control my people, you control the rest. All right. Are you planning to enter the temple? Temple? Yes. Our conference is over. We have dispersed peacefully. And we always follow the law. And the tank is opened for all by the law. You give us orders! Be, 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 be silent! Be silent! I appeal to you for calm and peace. We have proceeded lawfully thus far. Let us not take law into our own hands. We do not want to lose any more destruction and bloodshed. Return to your villages peacefully. I beg of you. Please. He has not slept. He has not eaten. He has fallen sick worrying about you. Don't you care anything about your family? I know what I am doing. Then why do you risk your life like this? Hey! Hey! Hey, Bhiva! Listen to me, I am your elder brother. You have to listen to me. Tell me, who was the one who supported your family when you were studying? Hey! When you did not have a single paisa with you? Tell me, who was that? Hey! Nothing in this house belongs to you. Nothing. Even the cooking utensils. Everything was bought with my money. Do you understand? Then take them and leave. All right. I'll take them. I'll take everything. Mauji? Mauji? Let him go to hell. Let him go to hell. All right. I will never set my foot again in this house. Never again. All right. Never again shall you see me. I want to live alone. Bhauji, have you eaten? Yes. Dear readers, as Mokanaik had to be closed, I am starting a new fortnightly, which is to be called Bahishkar Bharat, to voice the grievances of the depressed classes. I would like to appeal to the other subcasts to unite as one to strengthen the Satyagraha of Mahat. Here is a telegram from America congratulating you. It says you have ignited the spark of the unprecedented social revolution. <laughs> So they know that the tank is purified. <laughs> there is one more telegram from Banaras. Mm. We strongly protest your action and challenge you to repeat it at your own peril. Varag mm. give us something to eat. How is Bhaskar Bharat doing? All copies sold out. Good. Good. How was the council meeting? Stow me. <laughs> <laughs> then, tell me, what is the position in More? Dr. Sahib, they have proclaimed boycott on all who came to Mahad. In all villages, our people are facing extreme harassment. They refuse to sell them corn, pick corals on some pretext or the other. Many have been jailed. I myself was beaten up and they... They are facing threats and atrocities. And in Mahad, the municipal council has passed a resolution 
saying that the Chaudhar tank will not be open to untouchables. Deadly diseases require drastic remedies. Friends, there is a letter from Mr. Zawalkar, the leader of the non-Brahmin movement. It says, we the non-Brahmin leaders of Maharashtra declare our wholehearted support for the Satyagraha on condition that all Brahmins should be weeded out from it. The view that all Brahmins are enemies of the untouchables is a wrong view. I do not hate Brahmins personally. I hate the spirit of Brahminism which may be found in Brahmins and non-Brahmins alike. It has been resolved that December 25th and 26th, 1927 will be the dates for the Satyagraha at Mahad. Har, har. Mahadev! Har, har. Mahadev! Dr. Bhimra Mirkananta! Vilaso! Dr. Bhimra Mirkananta! I am Baron, police superintendent here at Dr. Ambedkar. The collector would like to see you. Please come. Brothers, while you march in Mahad, observe strict discipline. Satyagraha loses power if there is no discipline. You lead them, Chitra. I'll join you. Sahasra Buddha, come with me. Chalo, Mahad! Asprishada! 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 I do not want anyone near the tank. All right? Good. You must understand my problem. The high castes have gone to court, claiming the tank is private property, and the civil court has granted them a stay order. Mr. Hood, you know as well as I do that this is a completely fraudulent claim. But you know that it is up to the courts to decide whether or not they are justified. But the whole purpose of the Satyagraha was to drink water from the tank. If you persist, I will be forced to make arrests. You will be in contempt of court. Do you want to send 10,000 of your followers to jail? What purpose will it serve? You know I am not against your movement. I have resisted pressure to issue an order prohibiting the assembly of five or more persons. Thank you. We are grateful. Will you give me the opportunity to speak to your conference? Just for a few minutes, before you proceed to the tank. That will be possible. We must take your leave now. They'll be waiting for us to begin. This conference that has been called to inaugurate an era of equality in India has no parallel in Indian history. I can only compare this to a meeting held in France in 1789 that ushered the French Revolution. Our conference is the beginning of such a social revolution in India. We are here to declare a war. Our goal is not only the abolition of untouchability, but a war against the caste system itself. We will not be mortalized by drinking water from the tank, but this our action will prove that we are also human beings. We must establish the principle that status in India shall not be determined by birth, but by merit alone. We must rearrange Indian society on the principles of a casteless, classless society. We must adopt the principle that all men are born equal and die equal. Let's destroy the authority of the ancient Hindu scriptures that abound in inequality. Brothers and sisters, religion and slavery are not compatible. Brothers and sisters, even though I am a Brahmin by birth, I condemn outright the doctrines of the Manusmruti. 
It is a symbol, not of religion, but of inequality, cruelty, and injustice. I move a resolution that the Manusmriti, which has been the cause of untold sufferings for the generations, be publicly burned. Shudratu kariye dasyam, krita bhakrita mevava. धास्य आयो वही सृष्टो सो ब्राह्मण यास स्वयं भुवा वैश्य शूद्रो प्रेतने न स्वानि कर्मानि कारये सौहिचितो सो कर्मभ्य शोभये तामिदम जगत न स्वामीना निसृष्टो भी शूद्रा दास्या जिनुच्चते निसर्गजम हिततत्स्य प्रस्तस्मात दपोहति Dear Bhaurao, Congress has boycotted the Simon Commission and so has Muhammad Ali Jinnah. But I am determined to attend it in spite of all the anger and fire against me. During this crisis, I miss Balaram Bhav. He would have supported me had he been alive. After giving my classes in the law college, I'll be going to Pune. There I have to meet the Simon Commission tomorrow. Markebu was telling me that your enemies are... Rama, you still have a fever. Don't forget to take your medicines. I'll take care of myself. Hmm? So you are particularly anxious to get appointments in the public service? Yes, decidedly. Why is that so? Our experience on the administration of the law is very bitter. In most of the cases, the law is administered to the disadvantage of the depressed class man. I understand that you have been very active in the uplift of the depressed classes. Do the higher classes help you in this work? The whole caste Hindu population insists upon the depressed classes doing the unclean jobs. Because giving up doing these jobs means that the depressed classes are exceeding their social status, rivaling the upper class. What do you want to represent as the proper way in which the constitution of India should deal with the depressed classes? The first thing I would like to submit is that we claim that we must be treated as a distinct minority, separate from the Hindu community. Secondly, the depressed classes minority needs a far greater political protection than any other minority in British India for the simple reason that it has been kept educationally ever backward, economically poor, socially enslaved and suffers from grave political disabilities from which no other community suffers. So, we claim reserve seats if accompanied by adult franchise. And if there is no adult franchise? Then we would ask for a separate electorate, certain safeguards regarding the education of the depressed classes and their entry into public service. Mr. Solanke, do you keep the same view? Yes, of course. <clears throat> if the details of the scheme which you've laid out were to be introduced into the constitution of this country, would it not lead to perpetual class war? It might. But it would depend on the attitude of the majority, Sir John. Therefore, you would not, as a sagacious statesman, I do contemplate and I do desire the time when India shall be one. And I believe that a time will come when all these things will not be necessary. But again, it would depend upon the attitude of the majority towards the minority. How many members of the depressed classes practice at the bar? I am the only one. Any more questions, gentlemen? Thank you. Dr. Ambedkar, Mr. Solanke. Thank you, Major Atli. Simon! Simon! Go back! Go back! British Ansi Hastak! Ambedkar! Ambedkar! British Ansi Hastak! Ambedkar! Ambedkar! Ambedkar Ansi! Vikar Aso! Ambedkar Ansi! Vikar Aso! Mr. Sahib, don't you think that those who are clamoring for the independence of the country have inconsistent attitude? Yes, of course. 
They raised violent protest against the insulting treatment made out to Indians in South Africa and to Indian students in Britain. And at the same time, denying human rights to their own countrymen and co-religionists in India. I find this attitude inconsistent, selfish and shameless. Which is why my editorial says that we must act in a forcible way so as to let the caste Hindus know that to observe untouchability is a risk as dangerous as bearing live coals on their tongues. The untouchables will try to enter the Kalaram temple in Nasir. And if this is opposed, we will insist on Satyagraha. Naik, the political rights of the untouchables are more important than the temple entry. We just want you to lead the movement. We will take all the responsibilities. All right, Bhaurav. Then send a notice to the trustees of the Kalaram temple about the Satyagraha. Hmm. Oh. Jai are not the owners of the temple. They have no right to interfere in the traditions. Since the inception of the temple, our ancestors were appointed as the priests and we are following them honestly. We, the priests, are the supreme powers of the temple. If the trustees use their rights in a wrong way to defy the purity of the temple and allow the untouchables to enter the temple, we will strongly protest. <laughs> Hurry up! Close all the doors now! Mandiraj Pravay! Yes, Pajay! Mandiraj Pravay! Yes, Pajay! Kapta Baba Jan Ahmed Karansa! Yes, Pajay! By the order of the district magistrate, all the gates of the temple are locked. Hmm. By all means, we have to establish our right to enter the temple and worship God. I think there is no other way than Satyagraha. Bhaura, post our people at all four gates, south, north, east and west. We should be the first people to enter the temple when it opens. लागो मेरो यार फकीरी में मन लागो मेरो यार फकीरी में डॉक्टर अंबेडकर डोंट यू फील दैट इट्स अ क्राइम टू ब्लॉक द गेट्स एंड नॉट अलाउ द पीपल टू एंटर द टेंपल आई नो मिस्टर गॉर्डन इट इज सपोज आई ऑर्डर द इंडियन पेनल कोड 144 एंड अलाउ ओनली फोर पीपल हियर still we will struggle to establish our rights kali chedu na patta chedu na koi jeev satau
path, path mein Prabhu bazat hai, pahi si sinwa. What attitude do you propose to adopt in connection with this Rath procession? The untouchables will participate in dragging the Rath and we will offer the puja to the idol in the Rath and that has been a tradition. Caste Hindus will bring the Rath to the main door of the temple and after they have dragged it 10 feet from the gate, they will stop. Mm -hmm. And your people can join by holding the rope fastened to the Rath. Is that uh, agreeable to you? Yes, I agree. We have to find 50 men to pull the rath. How do we choose 50 out of 5,000? Choose the hefty and able-bodied. of the district magistrate and the threat to withdraw the police indicates that the government is not willing to use the power to help the people who are struggling for their rights. Such a government is no good for anybody. I don't agree with the findings of the magistrate of Nasik. I have already written to the governor about our version of the story, which is true. Dr. Ambedkar? Yes. From the Viceroy. Thank you. It's an invitation to the round table conference in London. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Dear Chitre, Congress and Gandhi have boycotted the round table conference. Congressmen hate and curse those who are going to attend it. I will demand what is rightful for my people and I will certainly uphold the demand for Swaraj. Selection of the representatives of the committee and Prime Minister's intervention. Mr. Chairman and respected delegates of the Round Table Conference, my colleague Rao Bahadur Srinivasan and I have the honor to place before you the point of view of the depressed classes of India who represent one-fifth of the total population of British India. Our point of view is this. The British government in India should be replaced by a government of the people, by the people and for the people. The depressed classes have traditionally welcomed the British as their deliverers from the tyranny and oppression of the Orthodox Hindus. Before the British, we could not enter the temple. Can we enter now? Before the British, we were denied entry into police and military forces. Is that career open to us now? Our wounds have remained as open source.
and they have not been righted although 150 years of British rule have rolled away. The Hindus claim them only to deny them appropriate rights. The Mohammedans refuse to recognize their separate existence because they fear that their privilege may be curtailed by the admission of a new arrival, depressed by the government, oppressed by the Hindus and disregarded by the Muslims. We are left in a most intolerable position of utter helplessness to which I am sure there is no parallel. We hold that the problem of the depressed classes will never be solved until they get power in their own hands. Given the present temper of the country, no constitution will be workable which is not acceptable by the majority of the people. The time when Britishers were to choose and India was to accept is gone, never to return. Dr. Ambedkar, the man of Dawa. Yours was the best oratory of the entire conference. I only said what was true. <laughs> My boy, I'm so proud of you. I remember the first time we met, like it was yesterday. <laughs> well, I must go now. Thank well you. Well done. <laughs> Sir, while we are on the subject, regarding my loan. What loan? For my studies. Oh, <laughs> that was a scholarship. <laughs> Dr. Ambedkar, you were wonderful. Thank you. That is what I thought, sir. But the Divan has been writing to me for the past six years, asking me to repay the loan. He has even written to the college where I teach. But it's preposterous. I'm terribly sorry, my boy. I'll, I'll take care of this. Our London radio correspondent says Dr. Ambedkar made a great impact on the British Parliament. The foreign press is eager to meet him when he arrives in Bombay. Thank you for agreeing to talk to me. My pleasure. Dr. Ambedkar, I've been following your movement for a long time and there's something I don't understand. You have been an opponent of the Congress party. They boycotted the round table conference and you went ahead and attended. And yet recently you successfully defended the 47 Congress such a grahis involved in the Chirana firing case. Isn't that a contradiction? Uh, Miss... Rosa. Rosa Epstein. Miss Epstein, there is no contradiction in my position. I took up this case only for the principles involved. I don't agree with the Congress, but I do believe that every citizen has a right to agitate. I see. The rights and the liberties of the people are far more important than the stability of the government. Why should Gandhiji himself send for you? Obviously, to lure our flock of sheep to his fold. Don't you fall under his spell. He's not a god. We should stick to our stand. Yes, yes. Namaste. Namaskar. Bapuji is on the terrace. Namaste. Namaste. And how is your progress with the charka, Meera Ben? I'm trying, Bapu. Good. You are doing absolutely fine. Just concentrate. One day you will master it. <laughs> good, good. That's right. Bapu. That's right. Apuji. Hmm. Doctor Ambedkar has come. Ah. Yes. Doctor Ambedkar. You wish to see me. Gandhiji, you send me a note calling me here. Oh yes. That is so. I believe you have some grievances against me and the Congress. Let me tell you, I have been troubled by the problem of the untouchables since my childhood. Before you were even born, Dr. Ambedkar. And because of my efforts, it has been made a plank on the Congress platform. And that is not all. We have spent not less than 20 lakhs on the upliftment of the untouchables. So it is really surprising that men like you should offer opposition 
to me and the Congress. Frankly, Congress has given only formal recognition to the problem. Hypocritical. Empty words that have no meaning. You said Congress spent 20 lakhs. I say it was all a waste. If Congress was sincere, it would have made removal of untouchability a condition to becoming the member of the Congress, not to wear other. You say the British government does not show a change of heart. I say that. The Hindus have not shown a change of heart either. As long as they all remain adamant, we will believe neither the Hindus nor the Congress nor any Mahatmas. History tells us that Mahatmas are like fleeting phantoms. They raise dust, but raise no levels. Gandhiji, I have no homeland. But this is your homeland, Dr. Ambedkar. And from the reports that have reached me of your work at the Roundtable Conference, I know that you are a patriot of sterling worth. How can we call this land our home when we are treated worse than cats and dogs? And the injustices inflicted upon us are so enormous that if we should ever be disloyal, the fault will lie with this land and not with us. The congressmen oppose our movement and dub me a traitor and you call me a patriot. All I know is I have been trying to win elementary human rights for my people without meaning or doing any harm to this land. You can call me a traitor or a patriot. I don't care for either label. Hmm. So what would you like us to do, doctor? You have agreed to political safeguards for the Muslims and Sikhs who are politically and economically much more advanced than the untouchables. The Roundtable Conference has recommended similar political safeguards for the untouchables too. What's your opinion about that? I'm against the political separation of the untouchables from the Hindus. That would be absolutely suicidal. <laughs> I thank you for your frank opinion. It is good to know where we stand as regards this vital problem. I take leave of you, Gandhiji. What impatience! Mahadev Bhai? Yes, Bapu. Why do you think he said he has no homeland? Perhaps uh, being a Mahar he feels... Uh... Dr. Ambedkar is a Mahar? The whole world knows this, Bapu. The whole world might know, but I didn't. Why didn't anybody tell me about it? I thought he was a progressive Brahmin from Pune. Mr. Gandhi left for London today to attend the Round Table Conference. He expressed his views to the press that the delegates were not chosen by the nation, but were chosen ones of the British government. Mr. Gandhi's participation does not substantially alter our position. Our first priority is to arm the liberal classes with political power. That is the only way. But Dr. Ambedkar, don't you think that education will change the situation of the untouchables? Have you been speaking to Mr. Gandhi? <laughs> I am the most educated person amongst us. Still, I am treated as an untouchable in society. What demands are you going to make? We demand a complete partition between ourselves and Hindus. And how do you propose to do that? In the future constitution of India, the depressed classes should be given a fundamental right declaring untouchability to be illegal and punishable by law. Mr. Gandhi said that the separate electorates will perpetuate the stigma and untouchable will remain untouchable. Let him say that. You cannot untest a 2,000-year-old test of human mind and turn it in the opposite direction. Oppressors never become serious, which is why I want political power. Not well-meaning words, not good intentions and no charity. What support do you have to get Mr. Chairman, I know what is on the minds of the delegates. The question of representation claimed by minority communities. We are reconciled to giving the Muslims and Sikhs special treatment. There are sound historical reasons for that. But as far as the untouchables are concerned, I and Congress strongly resist any special representation to be given to them. Untouchables 
are a part of Hindu religion and cannot be separated from it. Thank you. Declaration of war against us. Mm, yes. Fame, what happened? He has asked for an adjournment of the minority committee. I hear that he is planning to make a deal with the Muslims. What sort of deal? Congress will accept the Muslims 14 point demand if the Muslims oppose us. I don't understand. But why would he go to such lengths? He's supposed to be a great saint. Surely he can see the justness of your cause. Saint? He is a seasoned politician, my dear. When everything else fails, Gandhi will resort to... to intrigue. Mr. Prime Minister and friends, I have to announce with deep regret that we have failed to secure an agreeable solution to the communal question through informal discussions. The failure was inherent in the composition of delegates who are nominees of the government and not representatives of the people. As for the Congress, it represents the entire nation, including the untouchables. We Mr. Chairman, sir, I have not the slightest doubt that I fully represent the claims of my community. The Mahatma claims the Congress represents the depressed classes more than I do. I can only say that it is one of the many false claims which irresponsible people keep making. Even these telegrams coming to me from various parts of India, sent by the depressed classes, express no confidence in the Congress movement. And they condemn the methods adopted by the Congress workers. Let me make another point very clear, Mr. Prime Minister. The depressed classes are not clamoring for a transfer of power in India. But if that does happen, it should not fall in the hands of a few, an oligarchy or a group of people. The power should be shared by all the communities in their respective proportions. I strongly believe that untouchability is on its last leg and separate electorates will only perpetuate that stigma. I will walk from one end of India to the other to tell the untouchables that this is not the way to remove untouchability. I would rather Hinduism die than untouchability live. I have great regard for Dr. Ambedkar. But it seems that great wrong under which the learned doctor has labored and perhaps the bitter experiences that he has undergone have warped his decision. It is not a proper claim when Dr. Ambedkar seeks to speak for the whole of the untouchables. I can say with humility that I represent the vast masses of the untouchables. Those who speak of the political rights of the untouchables do not know their India. I would resist this kind of a political separation with my life. Thank you. The government will not allow community differences to prevent it from producing a constitution. Therefore, do not allow community difference to be more important than it is. Will you, each of you, every member of this committee, sign a request to me to settle the community question and pledge yourselves to accept my decision? Thank you.
British Premier Mr. MacDonald announced the communal award granting separate seats to the depressed classes. It is feared in some quarters that this award might politically balkanize India. So we felt it our duty to safeguard the rights of the depressed classes to a fair proportion of representation in the legislature. I am therefore afraid that my answer to you, Mr. Gandhi, must be that the government's decision stands. And ask yourself seriously the question whether it really justifies you in taking the action you contemplate. Yours very sincerely, Ramsey MacDonald. But Gandhiji didn't count on McDonald granting separate electorates. Muslims and Sikhs and Christians too are given separate electorates. Why doesn't he object to those? Why does he have to take it out on us alone? The Mahatma's face are unfathomable to us mere mortals. But the Mahatma is not an immortal person. No, it's the Congress. Instead of fighting Mahatma, why don't you believe that he is sincere in his pledge to remove untouchability? There have been many Mahatmas in India whose sole object was to remove untouchability. Every one of them failed in his mission. Mahatmas have come and Mahatmas have gone, but the untouchables have remained untouchables. Ambedkar! Ambedkar! Why don't you leave me in peace? I have work to do. Mahatma ji is dying and this man wants to live in peace? Why don't you go and meet the Mahatma in Pula? What for? I have said what I wanted to. Now let me work. I have to appear before the court tomorrow for a case. Is earning money more important to you than Gandhi ji's life? Madam Perrin and Mr. Tucker, you don't know what you are talking about. You and Lirias don't have to worry about their daily bread. But if I don't work, I don't eat my family's stars. Please leave me alone. Dr. Ambedkar, we are receiving cables from the whole world and treating us to save Gandhiji's life. Gandhiji's life must be saved. But why do you corner us? Why put Gandhiji's life against the interest of my people? Hang me by the nearest lamppost. But I would never betray my people in the name of saving Gandhiji's life. You would better appeal to Gandhiji to postpone is passed for about a week and then seek a solution for the problem. Gandhiji has a way of making people bend to his will. We too must show our willpower. By going on fast, he is making villains out of us. Who's that? Vaini? You shouldn't have come. been returning his tiffin. Almost untouched. I know. I know he was ill in England. Sit down. <laughs> you will kill yourself. I have enough troubles on my hands already. Won't you eat? <laughs> it's almost 12. The fast will begin now. Papu? Hmm. Thank you. Hmm. Here we are. My tussle with God commences. Mm -hmm. Rest meant to see you, Babu. Before you lie down for rest. Hmm. Ramo. Hmm. Thank 
God, you've come. Lie down, lie down, lie down. I'll bring you food. No. Emma, you lie down. I'll bring him food. Lie down. Are you taking medicines regularly? Why do you fight Gandhi, Baba? That's my lot. If I don't, we shall be left high and dry. No harm in that. But I would like to meet Dr. Ambedkar first. Here he comes. Namaste, Dr. Namaste. Namaste. This way, please. You have been very unfair to us. That's my lot. What do you suggest? Compensation for giving up separate electorates. Hmm. I know. The reserved seats. Surely, but the number is negotiable. Hmm. Let me tell you, Ambedkar. I am fully with you. You are an untouchable by birth. I consider myself untouchable by adoption. And I also know that you want to save my life. Yes, Gandhiji. You know, I am not adamant on a separate electorate as a matter of principle. The purpose is to enable a minority to select candidates to the legislature who will be its real, not nominal representatives. Excellent. But why a panel for some seats and direct elections for others? Surely that will create an artificial division for the depressed class members and divide the community. Why not have primary elections through panels for all the seats? All right. I make that concession. Panels for all seats. Hmm. Good. Now make the panel of five instead of two. And let me give you my word, Ambedkar. From now on, my entire life will be devoted to the total eradication of untouchability. <laughs> now. You may discuss the details with these friends. I have discussed with my colleagues. They won't agree for more than 126 seats in the Provincial Assembly. We are firm on 197 seats.
I had warned you, Doctor Sahib. We are receiving threatening letters. So, we are agreeing for 148 seats and 10% of the Hindu seats in the Central Assembly. Primary elections should terminate by the end of 10 years. The question of reserve seats should be settled by a referendum in a further 15 years. Dr. Ambedkar, the evil of the reserve seats and separation will be perpetuated by making its removal dependent on the will of the depressed classes. And you are asking for 25 years of referendum. I refuse to believe that untouchability will be no more in the next 20 years or so. Facing the sword of Damocles will surely compel the caste Hindus to change their inhuman attitudes to the untouchables. Dr. Ambedkar, try to understand. Gandhiji is fighting for his life. So what? So what? Oh, sorry. Don't worry. We will ask somebody to clean it. Devdas? How is Bapuji? The doctor says his thinking, his blood pressure is low. He is dehydrated and getting breathless. <laughs> Did you hear what Devdas is saying? Dr. Ambedkar, please, please, no referendum, please. I have given many concessions, Babuji. From 197 seats to 150, 18% in the central legislature and 4 in the panel. Surely untouchability will not vanish in 15 to 20 years just because of this. I propose a referendum of the depressed classes in 10 years on this issue. But these people are opposed to that. Uh, you mean... Putting the metal of caste Hindus on trial. Hmm. Not a bad idea. But why wait for so long? Huh? Why not five years? Need I tell you the anguish and resentment of the untouchables against centuries of wrongs and oppressions at the hands of the Hindus? And do you think, Babaji, five years? Yes. I know. You have a right to demand safeguards. But from my fiery bed, I beg you to be lenient, Ambedkar. I seek a reprieve for caste Hindus. Their conscience is aroused, Ambedkar. Statutory measures at this point will only delay the process of heart cleansing and self-purification. But Bapuji... All right. All right. The referendum. But within five years. Huh? Five years are my life. The long-standing confrontation between Mr. Gandhi and Dr. Ambedkar has finally dissolved in the form of the Pune Pact. Dr. Ambedkar has agreed to sign it without the condition of a referendum. He and Pandit Malviya will sign it. This will bring to an end Mr. Gandhi's long fast.
Dr. Anbedka, once again you have caused a great furore. <laughs> what can I say, Miss Epstein? It seems to be my lot. It would be no exaggeration to say that I am the most hated man in Hindu India today. I am represented as a traitor, cursed as a destroyer of Hinduism, branded as the greatest enemy of this country. But after the dust settles down and a review of my life is taken objectively, by the future historians, perhaps they will acclaim my services to the nation. And? If they don't? If they don't, I don't care. I know the depressed classes have implicit faith in my work. They'll hold me close to their hearts, of that I'm certain. Dr. Ambedkar, I have called you here to lend your support to Subarayan and Iyengar's temple entry bill. If I accept the temple entry bill, but agitate to abolish Chaturvarnan caste system, which side would you take? Suppose I accept Chaturvarna, what will be your interpretation? Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Shudra. Or in the reverse way, Shudra on the top. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Ambedkar? I am a Hindu not merely because I am born in Hindu fold, but I am one by conviction and by choice. There is no superiority or inferiority in the Hinduism of my conception. But if you want to fight Varnashram itself, <laughs> then I cannot be in your camp. Because I strongly believe Varnashram to be an integral part of Hinduism. Hmm. So, I cannot be in your camp too. Bapu, our salvation lies in political power, not in making pilgrimages or observance of fast. Hmm. I'll take your leave. Hmm. Hmm. Shall I tell you something? Hmm. Don't use the weapon of fast too often. Your life is so precious and the country needs you. Mm. Mm. I know you love books. But this is madness. Sahib, you built a house only for your books? <laughs> Next week, I sail again to London for the Joint Parliamentary Committee. <coughs> Bravo. Come sit here. I have a wish, Sahib. Yes, Ramo. Next time I will take you to America for medical treatment. No. It is better. Not America or England. Pandarpur. <clears throat> I want to bow before Lord Vitoba of Pandarpur. Won't you fulfill this small wish? Lord Vitoba is not happy with low caste people like us. <laughs> He does not show his face to us. Why go to a god who does not bless us? You fought for the temple entry at Nashik? Yes, but that was to assert our right, not for darshan of the god. If they call us Hindus, we must have a right to their gods too. I'll be happy with the darshan from a distance, like untouchables do. No, 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 Rama, no. Try to understand, Rama. 
a God that discriminates is not God. It's just a stone. How God lives in our hearts. Let's not demean ourselves by seeking mercy from a God that does not care for us. We shall create our own Pandapurs. Dear Bhavra, I am going through difficult times. As principal of the Law College, I am trying to bring reformations in the college syllabus. I am caught up between duties for my people and duties at home. I am anxious about Rama's health. She has deteriorated over the last few days. Take this. You'll get well. No. Get well. I'll take you to the best of doctors. It's no use. I'll make you happy. I'm happy. I'll die happy. I'm not afraid of death. Seen deaths. My mother, father. <coughs> Your parents, aunts, your brother, our four children. <coughs> Which was to wear a white saree. Uh, it's customary to clothe in a green sari. Sahib, 400 untouchables of Kahilur village are converting to Islam. Ask them to wait. I am going to make an important announcement at the Yavla conference. I 
And thus, my unfortunate brothers and sisters, when I look back at the past 10 years of our movement, I despair of the future. Enough, we are no longer dumb animals. The time has come to put an end to this harassment and indignities. Let's leave this cesspool of caste which made us worse than worms. Break these shackles. Destroy the social prison. Let's choose a new religion which will guarantee us equality of status and opportunities. Unfortunately, I was born a Hindu untouchable. It was beyond my power to prevent that. But it is within my power to refuse to live under these humiliating conditions. Though I was born a Hindu, I solemnly assure you that I will not die as a Hindu. Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Ansa! Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Ansa! Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Ansa! This is an unfortunate decision. But religion is not like a house or a cloak which can be changed at will. It is a more integral part of one's own self than of one's body. Dr. Ambedkar's bitterness clouds his vision. The millions of illiterate Harijans will not listen to him. Their lives, for good or evil, are involved with caste Hindus. Every known religion would fail if judged by the standards of Dr. Ambedkar. But the press should also note that I feel whatever label the learned doctor wears in the future, he is not a man who will allow himself to be forgotten. Mm. Mm. Baba Sahib, sugar? You want to kill me? Just a little. You fool. <laughs> <laughs> Diabetes. Eat kadu neem leaves. Or better boil them one fourth and drink every morning. That bitter dose, I have been swallowing it for my entire life. Mm. And now you are administering it to us. <laughs> Doctor. Hmm. Your leaving will be a great blow to Hinduism. A <laughs> blow? You surprise me, Mr. Prathan. We unclean untouchables have been the contaminators, the pollutants of you pure Aryans. Won't our leaving cleanse your religion of all impurities? Hmm. Baba Sahib, the exodus will not stop with you. It would be the death of Hindus in the long run. <laughs> it matters little, Masarekar Maharaj. The history of Hindustan will continue. Not if the Hindus become a minority in our own land. Then let the caste Hindus take a pledge that they will get rid of the evil of untouchability in a prescribed period. Is that so easy? Look at the magnitude of the problem. It would require time. Well, I can wait for five years for a change in Hindu hearts. But what guarantee? How am I to be sure? Yes, I know that you will show your good intentions. Make a Mahara Shankaracharya for one year. Let thousands of Brahmins fall at his feet. I am Miss Drescher from the Agrapada mission. And I would like you to meet Dr. Henry Crane from America. Hello, Dr. Crane. Hello. He has come to take a close look at your conversion movement. And has already met Mr. Gandhi at Vartha. Yes, Dr. Ambedkar. I've met many people in that connection. And I truly believe that Christianity is the answer that can meet all of your requirements. If you convert into Christianity, all of the Christian nations will help to raise your social, political, and economic status. And I think this won't be objectionable to any of your fellow Indians. Dr. Ambedkar, as the Bible says, the poor shall inherit the earth. 
Which Bible do you normally refer to, Miss Brusher? The Holy Bible, of course. That's true, but which edition? Modern version, King James's version, or which dates back to the Elizabethan era? Miss Brusher, have you ever gone through the commentaries on the Bible by Cook? It's a good analytical study on the Bible, and also refer to Life of Jesus by Renva and Khalil Gibran's Jesus, the Son of Man. It can give you a different perspective of Christianity. Dr. Ambedkar, we would like to invite you to the annual conference of the Methodist Church in Pune. Mm. And to the mission too. I'll try. Baba Sahab, Muslim India would be honored to welcome you and all untouchables. We promise you that untouchables will have the fullest equality and rights in every sphere political, social, economical, and religious. As you know, Baba Sahib, our religion believes in one God, Ekankar, and provides equal treatment to all its followers. It fulfills all the desired requirements regarding the conversion of depressed classes. Here is a telegram from Mahabodhi Society. Dr. Ambedkar, you and your community is cordially welcome to embrace Buddhism, which is professed in greater part of Asia. We guarantee equal status to all converts. There is no caste distinction amongst us. We are willing to send workers. Please let us know. It seems that Congress and Sardar are bent upon destroying you in these elections. Haven't you read Sardar Patel's statement? Yes. No concessions under the communal awards if we convert. Look, doctor, hmm. I have not come here as your friend. I have come here as an authorized representative of the Hindu Mahasabha. We know your views and your patriotism. We know that you will never convert to Islam or Christianity. Do not take me for granted. I don't need a certificate of patriotism. And I know the culture and history of this country better than many of you. Yes, it is my contention that the conversion to either of these faiths would fundamentally alter the political and cultural equation here. But how does it concern us if we have no stake? Doctor, we shall fight tooth and nail to protect your concessions, even if you convert to Sikhism. The Hindu Mahasabha will give you a written commitment. <laughs> How diabolical you old Brahmin bandicoot. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Bhaura, did you notice Dr. Munji's anxiety over my decision to change religion? Some people asked me what advantage would you gain by changing it. My answer to them is, just as Swaraj is necessary for India, so is change of religion necessary for the untouchables. The underlying motive in both is the desire for freedom. The Congress Committee has reiterated Mahatma Gandhi's principle of non-violence while giving Britain support in a war effort, but only on the condition of an assurance of complete freedom for India. On the other hand, Dr. Ambedkar's independent Labour Party has given a total and unconditional support to Britain's war against fascism. I believe that Nazism is a menace to the future of all mankind. This is a war between dictatorship and democracy. A dictatorship based not on any moral order, but on racial arrogance. The Congress doesn't seem to understand this. Do they want to exchange the British for the Nazis? Are you all right, Mrs. Stan? As you probably know, I am Jewish, originally from Germany. My family is still there. They have been reported missing. They may be in hiding. I fear for them. I'm so sorry. Dr. Ambedkar today expressed his views that there was nothing wrong in sharing power with the British government. He added that without their support, 
he would never have been able to solve the labor problems or establish the people's education society dear miss disher i have some sad news fanny's no more i could not write the criticism on the bible as promised but i have dedicated her an equally important book what congress and gandhi have done to the untouchables and i'm glad that she accepted it before she died no baba sir in raag bhook you are not supposed to play the madhyam it is sadha pagare sare ga now let's try together yes Mr President sir this constituent assembly declares its firm and solemn resolve to proclaim India as an independent sovereign republic and to draw up for her future governance a constitution wherein the territories will be governed by the country in substance my amendment proposes we postpone passing this resolution to a later stage to enable the muslim league and the indian states to participate if they choose so in the deliberations of the assembly now i call upon dr ambedkar to take the floor mr chairman i am indeed very grateful to you for having called me to speak on this resolution I know today we are divided politically socially and economically we are a group of warring camps and i may even go to the extent of confessing that i am probably one of the leaders of such a camp but sir with all this i am quite convinced that nothing in the world will prevent this country from becoming one i have no hesitation in saying that notwithstanding the agitation of the muslim league for the partition of india some day enough light will dawn upon them and they too will begin to think that a united india is better even for them it seems you are firm on your stand on pakistan well dr ambedkar in your own words and thoughts on pakistan you have said that hindus think that pakistan is a dream of muslims but muslims know that pakistan is a reality no mr jinnah i am against your two nation theory we should fight for the rights of the minorities staying on in this country well that stay seems to have gone now pakistan is going to be a reality untouchability in any form is abolished and the imposition of any disability on that account shall be an offense mahatma gandhi ki jai 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 too many complications baba sahib diabetes arthritis high blood pressure neuritis too many complications you have to be very careful baba sahib well i'll prescribe you some medicines ah meet my colleague dr sharda kabir she will explain you about the diet and other things doctor uh excuse me i have to see some patients I'll be back again. 
you will have to take insulin injection every day. Besides that, diet and exercise is a must. How is it possible? But you must do it. If you want to live longer. Your people, this country, they need you. If you want, I can come to your home and explain this to your wife. I lost my wife 12 years ago, young lady. Oh, I'm sorry. But there must be somebody at home to look after you. No, I have no one. It is virtuous that Mr. Jaikar has resigned from the Constituent Assembly. The Bombay Legislative Congress Party would like you to fill his seat. Is this agreeable to you? After two decades of poisoning the atmosphere against me, the Congress is sending me to the Constituent Assembly. Will your party men allow me to work in peace? The country is passing through a critical phase and it needs you, all people, irrespective of political parties, must contribute in building a new India. Mr. Patil, have you consulted Mr. Gandhi? Yes. Babu has no objection. Jawahar approves of it. And Rajendra Prasad is keen to get you there. <laughs> How reassuring to know that. Now you realize that it is possible to be a nationalist without being a congressman. Aren't you happy with the list of ministers, Bapu? Namaste ji. Namaste. Who will be in charge of law, Jawahar? And framing of the constitution? For the constitution, we are consulting experts all over the world. <laughs> all over the world? I think a sufferer should write the constitution of free India. How about Dr. Ambedkar, Jawahar? Hmm? Um. <laughs> yes, history has put this responsibility on us. I suppose I shall have to carry this blood on my conscience when I die. Well, to business then. Do you know the reason why I requested you to come here? I would like you to be a part of the national government of free India. Do you accept? It depends. What portfolio? Law. Will there be enough work? Plenty. Don't worry. A lot of new measures are to be legislated. Yes. The Hindu code bill is still pending, isn't it? Well, we are determined to clear it fast. Mm. I'm very glad. We shall be working together. Dear Bhavra, India is an independent country today. But will she maintain her independence? Will the many political parties with diverse and opposing political creeds place India above their own castes and creeds? We must be determined to defend our independence to the last drop of our blood. Your blood sugar is so high. No more sugar for you. Who makes tea for you? They try to remember but... Uh... No, you can't afford to be careless. No more fruits and no more rice. At least for a fortnight. And you need a checker for next week. There is a meeting of the drafting committee in Delhi. I have to be there for a week. I wonder who is going to take care of you in Delhi. Dear Chitre, my work in the draft constitution has increased a great deal. And on the other hand, my health forbids me the slightest of strains. I have considered your suggestion of having somebody to look after my health sympathetically. I have decided to marry Dr. Sharada Kabir. Baba Sahib. Hmm. Bapuji was shot dead. While he was going for the prayers.
डॉक्टर अम्बेडकर यू साइन फर्स्ट वेन शी विल साइन Now I proclaim you as man and wife. Mr. President sir, I introduce the draft constitution settled by the drafting committee and move that it be taken into consideration. Mr President sir i am one of those in the house who are aware of the amount of work and uh, enthusiasm uh, that dr ambedkar has brought to bear on the work of drafting this constitution the house is perhaps aware that of the seven members nominated by you one had resigned and was not replaced one was away in america and his place was not filled up and another person was engaged in his uh, state uh, state affairs and there was a void to that extent one or two people uh, were far away from delhi and perhaps reasons of health did not permit them to attend so it happened ultimately that the burden of drafting this constitution fell on dr ambedkar and i have no doubt we are grateful to him the credit that is given to me does not belong to me it belongs partly to sir b n rao the constitutional adviser to the constituent assembly who prepared a rough draft of the constitution for the consideration of the drafting committee a part of the credit must go to the members of the drafting committee also I shall not enter into the merits of the constitution because I feel however good a constitution may be it is sure to turn out bad because those who are called to work it happen to be a bad lot however bad a constitution may be it may turn out to be good if those who are called to work upon it happen to be a good lot it is therefore futile to pass any judgment upon the constitution without reference to the part which the people and their parties are likely to play thank you and sitting in this chair and watching the procedures from day to day i have realized what no one else could have with what rare zeal and devotion the members of the drafting committee and especially its chairman dr ambedkar irrespective of his indifferent health have worked in spite of factual objections nehru is strongly in favor of the passage of the controversial hindu code bill that was put forward by dr ambedkar whose aim it is to improve the women's lot he believes the barometer of an enlightened society can be discerned by the status of its women The Hindu Court Bill is an insult to Hindu Dharma Shastra. It casts aspersions on our hoary traditions and shastras. What does Dr. Ambedkar know of Hindu Dharma Shastra? Does he know Sanskrit? Has he read Vedas? In a revenge, he is out to destroy the Hindu Dharma Shastra by one blow of this law. Are we going to allow an untouchable to touch our sacred God-given laws? Never. Never we shall shed blood an uncouth unclean untouchable defiling the laws set centuries ago by bhagwan shri krishna bhagwan manu bhagwad gita vedas and upanishads don't touch hindu laws don't touch hindu laws ambedkar murawar ambedkar murawar Dear Bhavrao, there is so much opposition to the Hindu court bill from all quarters. The statue of Buddha that Madhigalkar is making for Siddharth College 
is in its final stage of completion. And so is my decision to embrace Buddhism. I was always impressed by Buddhism since my childhood as I had read Life of Buddha, a book written by Dada Kiloskar, a well-known writer, also my father's friend, which he gave me as a gift. Buddhism is the only religion that preaches the three principles of prajna, knowledge, karuna, compassion, and samatha, equality. Buddhism is the answer to the exploitation in the world. People today somehow try to relate Buddhism with communism. But communism is based on force and Buddhism is Ahimsa. It's a democratic system, which is why I have made up my mind to advise the millions of untouchables to embrace Buddhism. Baba sir, from the Prime Minister's office. Read it. You know that we have a good deal of opposition to the Hindu code bill both inside and outside the house. With the best will in the world, it cannot be passed in this session. I can quite understand your disappointment. Even the marriage and divorce parts of the bill had ultimately to be postponed. I... Atrocious. Ratu, come and take dictation. For a long time, I have been thinking of resigning my seat from the cabinet. The only thing that held me was the hope that it would be possible to give effect to the Hindu court bill. But with its demise, even the marriage and divorce part of it is killed. I see no purpose in me continuing as a member. The Hindu code bill was the greatest social reform measure ever undertaken by the legislature in this country. To leave inequality between class and class, sex and sex, as in Hindu society, untouched. And to go on passing legislation on economic reforms is to make a farce of our constitution. And to build a palace on a dung heap. Dear Vaman Rao Godbole, I am confident that one day to protect humanity, not only India, but the whole world will accept Buddhism. So the day of Diksha will be 14th of October 1956 at Nagpur. Yes, I had promised Gandhiji that when the time comes, I would choose the least harmful way for the country. And this is the greatest benefit I am conferring on the country by embracing Buddhism. For Buddhism is part and parcel of Indian culture. But won't you lose reservations and benefits meant for untouchables? <laughs> Are Brahmins prepared to become untouchables in return for these reservations? Why are you quitting Hinduism? <laughs> Why don't you ask your fathers and forefathers that question? Our efforts are to gain basic human rights and regain our self-respect. But why Buddhism? Because Buddha's religion is based on morality and ethics and has no caste. Because the social gospel of Hinduism is inequality, whereas Buddhism is all for equality. Because Buddha's teachings are modern, rational and ever contemporary, there is no dogma. He makes you think and live by reason. Except Buddha, 
all founders of religions claimed for themselves the role of savior. Buddha was satisfied with being simply a guide. Bhagavato Arato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arato Sama Sambuddhasa Buddhang Saranang Gachami Dhamman saranang gachami Sangan saranang gachami Panati pata veramani Sikha padang samadhyami Adinadana veramani Sikha padang samadhyami Kame sumiksha chara veramani sikha padang samadhyami Musa vada veramani sikha padang samadhyami Sura meraya majja pamadathana veramani sikha padang samadhyami Sadhu, sadhu Sadhu. My beloved brothers and sisters, I have renounced the Hindu religion and I am embracing the great Buddha and his Dhamma based on equality of man, knowledge, right path and compassion. Hear me, my brothers and sisters, I am no longer a Hindu, no longer an untouchable, I am a liberated human being, a free man, no longer a slave of a pernicious social system. And so, my brothers and sisters, I hereby take a pledge to dedicate my remaining life to spread the Dhamma, the light of Buddha, throughout the world. And now, my dear brothers and sisters, those of you who want to follow me unto the light shown by the great Buddha, should rise and repeat the Saranatraya and the pledges after me. I will follow the ten precepts laid down by Lord Buddha. I will treat all animals with compassion. I will consider all men as equal human beings. I will accept the Dhamma of Gautam Buddha and give up my old religion which is detrimental to the progress of humanity and which treats humans with contempt. I 
With this, I am being born anew. With this, I am being born anew. I shall no more pray to Hindu gods, nor shall I follow the Hindu rituals. Henceforth, the three principles enumerated by the Buddha, knowledge, right path and compassion, shall guide my actions throughout my life. Oh, my God. 